it's streaming and I am here in my nerdiness. Going to start with just a little teeny bit of reading because everybody wants to read in their exercise class, right? Everybody needs some information. So the book that I have is The Myofascial System in Form and Movement by Lori Nemitz. And I actually have something in this book, um, a piece of artwork and a little bit of writing. And actually, Michael Taft owns that artwork, who is a meditation teacher. So this is a great book about fascia. And sometimes people say, when I talk about fascia, oh, it's such a big thing right now. Everyone's all into it, but I've been into it for 35 years. That's like, that's great. It's good that it's become part of the public discourse, right? So, so I mean, we don't have to compete for our knowledge about fascia. And the more that everyone knows, the better it is for everyone. So, so I'm just gonna read a little bit from this book about fascia, because sometimes people are like, but how do you really know? Like, well, I studied connective tissue therapy in the 90s, which is about the fascia and the connective tissue. And then I continue to follow that interest, right? Post studying movement analysis. And I have done dissections with Gil Headley. And I'm like, oh, I know so much about fascia because I'm moving it, I'm feeling it. But there are people who know a hell of a lot more about it than I do, right? And we don't have to be in competition with each other. We can be in collaboration. And that's one thing about the fascia. The more that the whole system collaborates with each other, with itself, the healthier the fascia. So I'm just gonna read a couple of things from here. Um, at its most basic, fascia is simple, essentially a simple mix of cells, gels, fiber, and water. Fascia can be seen as a web that holds the body together and is the substance of its shape. We can think of fascia in terms of movement and health. Healthy fascia shows a lot of mobility between layers and a high proportion of proprioceptive receptors. Where there is a buildup of dehydration, fascia adhere, adhesions will increase. So that's just a couple of blurbs from in here. There's tons of really good stuff. If you're a nerd like me, it's really accessible. And she's great. Um, yeah, and she also has a, a dissection lab with Leslie Kamenoff. Um, and uh, Lydia Mann. So there you go. So one thing that she also says in here and, and that I believe that is super true is one reason that I always do this breathing first is because we wanna stretch out through our fascia without going into our biggest like stretchy stretch. We're not going for increasing our uh, flexibility but we're opening up, lengthening the fascia as we inhale and open and then exhale, lowering the arms. So just feeling into your fingertips, Feeling your feet on the floor, inhale, reach it out and up. Ah, and exhale. We're breathing into our bodies, right? Filling up our lungs and exhale and release and inhale. Open and exhale, let it go. Let's spiral, twisting. So that was in the vertical plane. Now we're spiraling through the horizontal plane. So that's the thing, like these different layers of fascia, the fibers in, in them might be in very different uh, planar directions. So it might be that there's a sliding surface going like this with another one underneath going like this, like in our IT band and underneath it, there is these two differentiated surfaces. And if they can move against each other, it's easier to move. So another thing, once we, when we age, we are going to become more dense, right? That's part of the process, but we don't need to be dehydrated if we keep moving regularly. And that also means that we're drinking enough fluids, right? So it's not just hydrate by drinking a ton of water and sit there like a lump. It's like drink water, preferably before you have any uh, caffeine in the morning, keep drinking water throughout the day or yeah preferably water. Water is the best and not soda, not unless it's just soda water, not too much caffeine. Open it out into a big X. We're going to keep moving. So we're just radiating out, finding these lines, right? Like this line from here to here, stretching that out. And then the other side, just big weight shift and we're stretching, lengthening. We're going to change it in a second, get even more exciting. So shifting side to side. Okay, we're gonna take it out here and you're gonna internally rotate and externally rotate. Internally rotate, externally rotate. Internally rotate, externally rotate, spiraling in, spiraling out, 
spiraling out. Water loves a spiral. Other side, internal rotation, external rotation. Internal rotation, external rotation. Internal rotation, external rotation. Internal rotation, external rotation. And I wanna say also, sometimes people say like in exercise, squeeze your core. I don't know if that's always the best. We don't know, what does that mean to somebody? Like, does it mean squeeze in like this? Does it mean squeeze in like this? Like there's a lot of ways to squeeze our core. So I don't like to think of that as I'm, but I'm noticing as I do this, I am activating in my core, just in the support structure. I'm not squeezing it in, but I feel it supporting my movement, right? So I'm not condensing down, but I'm radiating out, coming in, radiating out, try it on the other side and just feel what needs to happen to support this. Not so that you're over, you know, driving the car with the brakes on, but you're just supporting what you need to do. Open, in and out. And then we're gonna do a little more spinal movement, internal rotation, external rotation, <laughs> internal rotation, head tail connection, spiraling the arms in, spiraling them out. And we can think that on the like level of our cells, the level of our fascia, there's this inner spiral. We're kind of ringing, like ringing something out, right? That is spiraling. And after, like what happens if you wring out a sponge and then you put it in the water, it retrieves the water, right? So we're kind of doing that with our bodies as well. I'm very caffeinated. Can you tell? Rounding your spine, arch and open. I have been cutting down on my caffeine intake this week. And then this morning I was like, no, I'm just gonna have the full coffee. <sighs> and I can feel the difference. Good, and then, so we're also getting this, especially this fascia and tissue in our lower arm, having this inner, inner and outer spiral, right? Super important that we get that movement through our wrists and hands. So we've been moving for a minute and there was a request before class in the Zoom room to do a little bit of breathing work, but I think we're gonna do a limp flush that gets into our face. So I'm actually gonna start seated just so I can be in the camera. Ooh, look at this, and I can bounce. Great for the fascia, great for the nervous system, letting things go. All right, let me not get derailed. Rubbing your hands together. If you have a physio ball, get on that thing and bounce around five, 10 minutes a day. That will change what's going on in your body a lot, working with your lymph, working with your nervous system. All right, right hand to the upper left collarbone, right up here. Getting onto both sides of it, you can move around underneath. Ha, ah, relax your neck and jaw. So this is the limp flush that we're starting with, but we're gonna go up into our face before we go down into our bodies. Before we go down into our torso. So getting that upper quadrant under the collarbone, over the collarbone, lots of lymphatic tissue. This is the main return pathway into the heart. So if this is blocked, we are gonna have problems, right? <laughs> there will be toxicity building up, right? We want that to come in, filter out, remove from the body. Same thing on the other side. And this one on the left side is doing three quarters of your body. Right side is doing cisterna chile. And this upper quarter, left side is doing your legs. I think it might be doing your head too. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what's happening up there. And I want to correct something I said the other day, because I think that is like our tendons and our ligaments are also fascia. I don't know why. I just heard Gil say something like the, because the, the packing tape like structure of the, uh, like the Achilles tendon or the um, IT band, those big bandy types of fascia are very different than the really soft filmy types of fascia. <laughs> and then come up, angle of the jaw, very gentle. You can slow it down, you can slow yourself down. Huh, maybe yawn, move your head around a little bit. Gentle and kind to your body. So this lymph flush is a great addition to whatever ecology of practices you have that you do on a daily basis. 
Ha, ah, that's a John Verbanke term. And that I, I learned it from him. Maybe somebody else said it. Ecology of practices. And I've been thinking about that. I have a big ecology of practices that I do. And like I spend a lot of my time, a lot of my life practicing being a person. And how can I do that better for my health and for my feeling of being me? All right, we're going to come up into our face and we're going to go right here between just above your nostril. There should be kind of like a little indentation, just getting in there. And as you're doing it, squish up your face a little bit, squish and open, right? So we're moving the fascia of our face. We're squishing it in, opening it out, squishing it in, opening it out, right? So we're getting like collagen is one of those gels that's in there. Collagen is part of the fascia. So we're just letting it readjust in our own faces as we also squish around. Yeah, I've been a little stuffed up because of the uh, rain. It's been kind of rainy and humid the past couple of days. All right, from there, we're gonna take a circle under your cheekbone. Just circle under the cheekbone out to the edge two or three times. Also, don't worry about what your face looks like, right? This isn't the beauty moment. Ah. Huh. Shake it out, shake it out, shake it out. We're going to take our thumb next to our nose, go up, pull in up above the eyebrow, but not too hard. Like this shouldn't hurt you. This should be gentle enough, but pulling enough that something's going on. Oh, and I'm noticing that as I go up there, I want to look around. So I'm giving my eyeballs a little uh, movement with that pull on the tissue. You don't have to, if it feels good, do it. If it doesn't, don't. Eyeballs moving around. And then quick up the side of the face, we're gonna find there's a little indentation here, just where the, oh, the tragus, your little ear nub is. So it's kind of right next to, maybe above it a bit. A little massage in there. And then below that, kind of in the mandibular joint, you get, get in there. So this lymphatic stuff under here is also serving your teeth, right? Like this is clearing the stuff away from your teeth. So for mouth health, moving the lymphatic tissue, moving the jaw, the lymph nodes, the jaw, so that that stuff can clear out. And I remember when I had an infection, I ended up getting a... um root canal. And now that's the place where I still have a little bit of a blockage in the lymph node where that root canal happened. But for a while I couldn't even yawn because it was so weird. All right, go up to your temples, gentle tip tap, pitter pat, tippy tap the temples. Ugh. Relax your face. And then let's take the hands, the 10 little dragons and give them a run through the forest. In whatever way feels good. Just getting the whole, all the hair follicles, even if you're bald, just stimulating the cranium. Getting some movement up there. And around the back. And then we're going to come back down, shake it out, shake it out. I'm looking more and more like Bozo. Pete Miser or Bozo the Clown. Let's uh, take your right hand to your left armpit peck, getting in there, lots of uh, lymph nodes in there. We're back to the lymph. <laughs> relax your face, relax your jaw, Ugh, relax your tongue. We don't really go around with our tongue relaxed all the time, right? That's probably not a good thing to do. But sometimes letting it relax, it's a really good um, de-escalator. When things are getting tense, just try relaxing your tongue and talking like this and everything is going to be okay. Switch it to the other side. We call that the droopy voice, like droopy the dog. Armpit. I really don't like doing my armpit when I don't have a shirt on. It's kind of like, ew, I don't like sticking my fingers in there, but hey, whatever. It's your body. Around your pec. Upper quadrant of the boob weight. Shake it out, shake it out, shake it out. Cisterna Kylie right in the middle. I'm gonna come up off my ball. And then we're gonna go to the inguinal fold. So if you're doing this on a daily basis, like 
10 to 15 seconds, 30 seconds in one area is plenty. You don't have to stay there forever. But if you do, and you see that I am moving, like I am moving from side to side as I do this, Ugh. keeping the flow moving through my body. Take it down behind your knees, same thing. I can still feel that my right knee, there's a little bit of, I don't know if it's inflammation or density in the tissue on that side. It's not really, it doesn't feel swollen. I'm just coming around the front just to feel into it. If you know what's going in your body, going on in your body, it's helpful, right? Okay. And also think that you are capable from your inner wisdom to heal a lot of your body, right? A lot of the times your body healing is actually coming from you. It may be assisted by a doctor. It may be assisted by medicine. It may be assisted by whatever it's assisted by. But ultimately, it's something within you that's like, okay, now we're shifting this. We're healing this pattern. I mean, it might be antibiotics, right? But also, you decided to go to the doctor to get the antibiotics. So some part of you has gone, okay, we're going to fix this. So just taking some, let's circle from side to side, taking some, uh, I want to, I don't want to say responsibility for yourself, because that sounds so like, but taking some, I, I wish there was a better word than responsibility. If any of you articulate, literate people out there think of a better word, please agency. type it. Agency. Thank you. That's what I was looking for. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. Agency. Exactly. We're, I feel like so much of our lives, we're taught not to take agency for our choices, not, the, oh no, this is how it has to happen. But ultimately at a certain point, you, if you want to have your own life, you have to go, oh, it's really up to me. It's my choices. Let's just take a little shake out, one leg and then the other off the floor, <laughs> shaking out whatever tension you need to let go of. <sighs> and let's do a breath practice. So we're going to do a, we're going to do a big breath practice, a big puff and puff sort of Wim Hof style breath. So it's going to be inhale. If you need to go slower, I think you're blowing everything out. So let's get bigger. Taking that strength and agency in with the breath. Blowing everything out you don't need. Three more. Two. Last one. Shake it out, shake it out. And then take a big breath in and just hold. Feel yourself as you hold your breath. If you need to exhale, exhale. Just feel your body, maybe some micro movement, bringing the awareness all inside as you're in that breath hold. And then a let out the steam. All the energy going out and down towards your feet. Shake it out, shake it out, shake it out. So this is a more one of the more intense practices. I did study with one of Wim Hof's teachers, who then got uh, who then started his own system and got ixnade from the um, Wim Hof school. So Tim Vanderfleet, who is awesome, I did a bunch of courses on breath work with him. And this is one of the sort of main things to do, but it's a more intense, more upregulating breath work practice. So this is not. It may relax you but it also is really bringing in that big breath, right? So anytime we're bringing in that big breath, that's gonna be up regulation. That's not really down regulation. I'm still doing it in a really strong manner, but the is down regulation. It is gonna slow my exhale and calm me down. So let's do that whole thing one more time. Um, you can do this with or without the hands, but thinking of the arms as the wings of the lungs and seeing if you can get some strength pushing down so that there's this like resolve agency. We have to practice that, especially for people who are extremely light, right? It can be very hard to get into that groundedness. Off we go. Try to blow everything out. Four more. 
three, two, last one. And then big one, everything in, everything out. And we're gonna fill up one more time and hold. And just hold. Micro movement, feel your inner body. If you feel dizzy, sit down. Normally we wouldn't have you do this standing. You'd be seated or laying down, but hey, here we are standing. So if you start to feel dizzy, just sit down. Holding that breath for as long as you can. I keep pulling in. And then exhale. Gentle release. And let's just shake it out again. And let's just go with that. Um, we're gonna do it with movement. I'm actually gonna give us music too. So we're just gonna have a, to down regulate and really find our flow. Oh, and I have to say this about fascia. So, and I was reading in that book and it makes perfect sense. Uh, and, and it's something that we talk about in Laban. It's free flow and bound flow. Bound flow is really contained and specific, but in the body, fascia has both free water and bound water. And the bound water is often sort of gel-like, like aspic, right, or jelly, but it's very strong. It's not, it's funny, cause like you can touch that stuff and you're like, whoa, this has got some real integrity. So within our body, we have these shifting flows that are both bound and free. So we're gonna do this, let me share sound. We're gonna do this quick. Quick, maybe not quick. Ah, we're gonna, I know what we're gonna use. We're gonna use some Michelle Aiello and we're just gonna see if we can find our free flow with that soft, gentle hiss exhale whenever you want to. So it's not gonna be all the time. This is a, uh, a pretty short song. It's like three and a half minutes long. And this is just to move, create inner spaciousness and flow in your gliding free fascia. We're going to get exercising in a minute. Oops, wrong music. Totally the wrong music. Sorry about that. Here we go. So let yourself explore the space, right? Getting busy, coming into yourself, finding this sort of lightness and suspension, and then also the groundedness of coming down. You can imagine that you're suspended in water, or that somebody has strings, gentle strings that are just lifting you up so you can find that suspension. Letting yourself move up, down, side, side, forward, backward, and in combinations and adding that soft, gentle hiss whenever you want to. So taking up space, imagine that you're dancing with the space around you or you're dancing with your house you're dancing with your room so it's not just dead space but it's alive full of potential very potent space very interactive you can circle through this if you feel like oh i'm not a dancer you don't need to dance you're just discovering the space around you and you're bringing this fluid bound and free flow through your body. So controlled flow and then more free flow where there's less control, it's more childlike. Ah. Less contained. So working with containment and then freedom. Yeah, this, this definitely gets to be one of the weirder exercise classes, but this is the ecology of practices, right? We did the limp flush. We did some pretty intense breath work. Now we're doing some free flow. You want more flow in your life? Find some flow in your movement. If you wanna be enlightened, lighten up. Anything can be nourishing. Like it could be a sense of smell where you're like, oh, that just makes me feel so good. It could be color. Like, oh, when I wear these colors, it makes me happy. I feel different. So anything, Anything can be the support system. Feeling the air on your skin, that could be the support system. Oh, I feel connected to the earth. I feel connected to the air. I'm, I'm connected to the planet. Gravity is working with me. I can let go. I can take my time 
it's my time. I can take as much of it as I want. It doesn't belong to someone else. I choose. Feeling those arms like the wings of the lungs, right? All the way out to your fingertips, those little capillary ends where the, where the arterial flow turns to the venous flow to come back to your heart. All right. That is the end of our free dance moment. Thank you, Michelle Aiello. This song is called The Blue Stetson Three from Dust Bowls. Bowls. It or is it called Oklahoma? It is Oklahoma. Anyway, it's all very confusing, but it's on Bandcamp. Um, let's take it down to the floor. Let's get some actual exercise. <laughs> It's funny, I, I remember when I was studying movement analysis, in, I was in my 20s, and uh, I remember some exercises, and, and I was like, oh, that's so easy, I, I totally have it, like, this is a piece of cake, I'm just doing the thing, I'm like, this is nothing, and then the, <laughs> my teacher's like, used me as an example of everything that was wrong, <laughs> I was so schooled in that moment, like, sometimes we think we know a lot about something, and maybe we don't. <laughs> it was it was arm circles. We were doing arm circles. And in general, I don't think it's very kind to use somebody as an example of everything that's going wrong. But at, the, at that moment, it was, it was a good teaching moment. My ego just went, oh, <laughs> I got it all wrong. So what it was about was how our humerus connects into our rotator cuff. So let's just start there with just this internal and external rotation, thinking of that from the fingertips through the radius and on the, up to the humor, humerus, having this big spirally movement into our rotator cuff. This is connecting into our collarbone and into our scapula. Just feeling into that for a second. You can feel one side, feel the other. Yeah, and so it was, what, what I got schooled on was about gradated rotation moving through that rotator cuff. So, there, so that the idea is that there isn't a point where the whole thing switches. Like it goes one way, one way, one way, and then flip. But that it's constantly in this readjustment within the joint. There's no quick flip. So just try a couple arm circles, even as we're seated on one side and on the other, and feel into how the, um, it can go in both directions. So this is a little bit more of an exploration where you're feeling into your own body. And if it's too much with your whole arm, try it with just your chicken wing, right? Just the elbow circling. You'll feel what's happening. Especially if you have a lot of popping and clicking, in that joint. And generally for women, we tend to not be as built up in our musculature, in our shoulders. So I highly recommend doing some weight training for the arms, even if it's just your own body weight, but feeling that relationship from your fingertips, through your arm, into your collarbones, into your scapula. All right, getting into the more specific exercises where we have something actually to do. Inhale, open, other than learn, <laughs> right? Because when we're in the exercise and we don't know what's going on, that's really the open space for learning. If we're in the exercise and we're like, oh, we're doing this thing, I know this thing. How open are we to really experiencing what's going on? Feeling into your body. Try not to wander during the workout. Try not to like take it to lunch or what happened yesterday, or what's gonna happen later. Try to stay present in the movement. All right, we're gonna circle the whole way around, taking it sideways, forward, around to the other side, and open it up. Changing direction. Head away from your tail, big head tail connection, spinal movement, letting the rib cage, lungs, the jellyfish of the diaphragm, mobilize around so there's no adhesions we're hydrating that fascia we're giving those sliding surfaces the capacity to slide they're not getting gummed up somebody asked me uh actually it was a question in from youtube how much water do i drink a day and i have to say i drink as much as i want <laughs> like i listen to my body if i'm thirsty i drink water but as we age, let's change legs, non-dominant leg in front. As we age, we tend to get less uh, attuned to our thirst. So we want to not bypass the sensation of thirst. This is another reason to feel into your body. Another reason for embodiment. Side side a few times, and then you can start circling it the whole way around. 
when we pay attention to our body, we know when we're thirsty. We know when we're hungry. We know when we have to go pee. We know when we have to go poop and we do it, right? We don't go, oh, that doesn't matter. I'm just going to leave it alone. We listen and then we respond. If you're shutting down your sensation of your body, then <laughs> the toxicity is going to build up, right? It's a way of releasing. So that's, I'm just keep talking about this embodiment thing because people are like, well, why do I need to do it? Well, for your health, for your mental health, for your physical health, for your emotional health, all the things roll from side to side, one butt cheek, and then the other. And think of pouring your body into this. So we're not trying to use our muscles to get from side to side. We're pouring the water in our body. So I'm going to show you this way because I'm really curling in here, rounding my lower back so that I get through, I'm massaging through the tissue in my glutes, my rotators, and I'm getting this internal spiral in my legs. And then maybe a slight external spiral with the other leg. So all that tissue in my leg is having this chance to move around. If those surfaces of that bandy fascia and the gel-like fascia underneath it didn't have the capacity to move, we couldn't do this, right? It would be like, er, don't have much movement. All right, let's take it all the way down to the floor. And same thing, let's go with the knees off the feet off the floor. So we've been moving for a while. I think we're ready to move a little bit more. I am opening and closing. You could do this with your knees staying together. Actually, try both of them and see what it feels like in your body. What does your body need right now? Like this is gonna be more of a massage through the back body. Well, for my body it is. And this is more like working my core, working my arms, working that relationship. Still a massage, but not as relaxed because I'm keeping my legs together. So if you need to let go more, then try it with the legs being more relaxed. One leg moves, the other leg moves, relaxed and easy. If you need to engage more, keep the legs together. And if you wanna make it harder and engaged, straight legs. I feel like this particular exercise is really important for my spine. Yeah, every time I do it, I get some adjustment in my spine. The free chiropractor of the floor. Last one, bringing it in. And then we're going to press up. I have my feet where I can just touch my heels. I'm gonna press up. I'm gonna interlace my hands below my butt, walk my shoulders closer together, pushing the floor away with my feet, knees together, knees open. So again, that fascia in your legs is sliding against itself or the next layer. These layers, these sliding surfaces are freeing up. Inhale open, exhale close. Pushing the floor away. Use your breath. Exaggerate it. So we're not squeezing the front, right? We're letting the front really open up, blossoming open as we're pushing with the back. And then come into center, both heels off the floor and lower down. Inhale up, exhale down. Actually, let's add a foot flex. So toes down, heels up, heels down, toes up, down, press, down, lift, down, press, down, lift, down, press, down, toes, heels, flex your foot, heels, Flex your foot, heels, flex your foot, pressing up, heels and flex and release. Open your hands, shoulders wide, soften down, ha, vertebra by vertebra, vertebra to the floor, all the way down. And take a little heel rock, just pushing and pulling with your feet, relaxing your spine, becoming fluid again. So releasing and softening into a little bit of free flow from the head tail connection through the spinal cord, lots of space so that you are not getting spinal stenosis, right? Spinal stenosis is where the inside of your spine starts to calcify. And it, so you start to not be able to move as much. How do we avoid that? By moving, by creating fluidity. 
and imagining that if you are starting to calcify in there, that your body can reabsorb it by giving it some free flow and some intention, right? Intention has a lot of power in our body. Ah, let it go. Knees dropping from side to side, just relaxed and easy opening through the middle. This is very loose. One leg moves and then the other, relax your feet, massage out your butt and your lower back. And then come in and let's take the legs up, arms up, shake, 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 free flow, free flow. Ah, free up your spine, shake like popcorn popping. How many times does a popcorn kernel get to pop? Just once, but maybe it's bouncing around before it pops. And then it also gets kind of bounced around after it's popped because other things are popping around it. All right, coming, the anatomy of a popcorn kernel, popping. Let's come in, take a happy baby. Oh, I got a nice big pop in my hip. Open and close, wiggle around. Let your baby be your personal baby where you're listening to your body. <sighs> Letting those sliding surfaces of the fascia slide around. And so with the fascia, there are like entire muscle casings and like whole sort of bandy, things holding in like the whole, all of this coming, it's held in, is contained. But then within that, there's also like fascia within the muscle. There are fibers of fascia. It's all the fibrous stuff creating the shape of even each little kind of tubule of muscle. Like if you look at an orange, all the white stuff inside under the skin, that would be like fascia in your body. And if you roll an orange around before you peel it, you can break up some of that fascia and make it easier to peel. I did not know that. I read that in the fascia book. One leg at a time, going one, two, three, flex and change, circle it around, pointed toes, one, two, three. I mean, I did know that the fruit was like fascia. I just didn't know about the rolling it around to sort of break up the fascia or to soften it make it easier to move like our own bodies. So compression, massage also is helpful. And sometimes when we're injured or we have something going on, we're tight, it's really helpful to have another person touch your body in, <laughs> in an appropriate manner. I usually see a chiropractor regularly. And the reason I see a chiropractor instead of a massage therapist or something is because I can't afford it. That's what I can afford. For some reason, the chiropractor I can see in is like 50 bucks or less, but massage therapist usually like a hundred and something. So, you know, I wish I could do both, but I can't. Internally rotate one leg at a time, which is one reason I have a huge ecology of practices for myself to take care of my own body. Internal rotation spiraling in. And the ecology of practices for me means meditation, breath work, taking a walk outside first thing in the morning. Do I do all of them every day? No, I do most of them often. I would say I do like the walk, I do almost every day. I did not go today because it was raining and I had a bunch of other things to do. But I'd say six out of seven days, if not seven days of most weeks, I am out walking first thing in the morning. Also doing a meditation practice and some breath work. All right, let's go back up, walk. And you know what? People are like, how do you do all the things you do? And I'm like, well, I don't have kids. I have cats and a boyfriend. That's what I'm dealing with. It makes it a lot easier. Love other people's kids. I'm happy people are having them, but I don't have any of my own and I never wanted them. So that was a good choice on my part. <laughs> Going back and forth, I have lots of time to do things, lots of time to work on my stuff. So huge kudos to people who have children. I recognize your dilemma in taking the time for yourself. But I also wanna say that when you are taking care of a lot of people, you really need to take care of yourself too so the well doesn't run dry. Then tops of the feet, uh, feet down, bottoms of the feet to the floor, pulling back and forth. Self-care, so undervalued in our culture and so important. And I don't mean self-care by like, well, whatever it means to you, whatever it means to you to do self-care. But it doesn't necessarily mean a bubble bath, although that can be really good self-care and relax, take it down. And let's go with uh, both legs up, give them a shake so that the tissue gets neutral again. And then we're gonna go with this flexing and extending. So 
I am going to take one leg up. You can bend the bottom knee. If you're tighter, bend the bottom knee. If you're looser, go ahead and straighten it out. I'm going to flex the knee and ankle here on an inhale. I'm going to exhale, reach it out and point. Flexing it in, reaching and opening. Flex it in, reach and open. You can also do this with a strap or grab a towel, a t-shirt, something around your foot to make it easier. And I'm going to take mine slightly. So I come into the front and then I just take it slightly to the side to get it higher. Flexing it in, opening up. Inhale, exhale. Imagine that you're breathing all the way out to your toes, right? Again, that distal edge where the capillaries go from being arterial blood, nourishing and feeding to venous blood, eliminating waste right out there in the edges of your toes, in the little capillaries, in that space where the shift happens. Then we're gonna inhale, open it out to the diagonal and exhale, cross your midline. Inhale, open and exhale, cross. I'm not rolling with my pelvis. I'm just moving my leg, my femur head in the hip socket. If you want to roll with your pelvis, go for it. Really listen to your body. It might be, oh, I really need to roll across this. But then you're not getting the movement, the differentiated movement of that hip socket. So try it both ways. If you feel like you want to roll, try not rolling. Uh, and then bring it in, bend the knee, cross it over, big spiral. Breathe into your lungs. I am taking this hand and really pushing my knee into the floor, right? And then I can also, with this hand, open up and spiral more. Ah, and then bring it in. Both feet on the floor, pick up your butt, shake it out. Shake it, shake it, shake it. Jiggle, 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 like you're at Carnival in Rio wearing a thong. Shake it, shake it, shake it. And a lot of feathers and release it down. Stretch your leg up, other side. You're gonna flex it in and then reach it out. Inhale, flex, exhale. I used to dance a long time ago, again, in my 20s. I, I, I danced a little bit with a, a Brazilian folkloric company called Roots of Brazil with Lija Bajeto, which was super, super fun. And it wasn't like, oh, we were doing a bunch of choreography. It was mostly we're dancing samba and doing like events. But my God, we had the funnest costumes and uh, like it, we had a Carmen Miranda, like the whole fruit head thing and these big skirts. And we were, <laughs> we were in a soap opera at one point. I think it was, I, I can't remember which one it was. I want to say it's One Life to Live. Somewhere I have like the video reel of it. Like they were down, it, I, but it might've been something else. <laughs> I don't know what it was. <laughs> it's really funny. Flex it in, reach it out. Flex it in, reach it out. Flex it in, reach it out. Inhale, open. Take the leg out to the side and then cross the midline. Inhale, opening it out. Exhale, crossing over. Inhale, open. Exhale, cross. Inhale, open. Exhale, cross. And Lija was amazing, the woman who ran it. She, was, she could sing. She sang in one of like the... It was like some, they were doing some big Brazil thing at um, Lincoln Center out of doors. And she, she ended up being like one of the singers singing. And she was fantastic for this whole like Brazil festival that was happening. And it was next when they do that Lincoln Center out of doors. It was on that big um, stage right next to uh, where ABT does their thing, right between ABT and City Ballet. Bring it in. Everything is a dance reference. Like, what is it called? Pick it up, shake it out. Sorry, let's go over to the side a little bit longer. I didn't stay there very long. Give yourself the extra twist and then come in. Let's grab weights. So if you don't have weights, no worries. If you have weights, great. I'm just using light weights. I am using two three pound weights and I'm gonna hold them together in one hand. If you don't have weights and you can grab like a can of beans, especially with those big ones, <laughs> grab that, but don't drop it on your face. So we're gonna knock our knees together, pigeon toe to knock knee, circling around our bodies with the weights. Inhale, open, so more rotator cuff health, but also we're really mobilizing our diaphragm, our heart and our lungs, right? And the lungs 
are hugging the heart, right? Use the breath to massage your heart. So we're getting all of this movement. This is like some anti-heart attack activity. Movement, breath, staying present in the body. Changing direction. I'm exhaling up, inhaling down. Last one. And let's come down, separate your weights. If you only have one, go grab another can. We're just gonna punch forward and then bring it back in. Punch, bring it in. So you're spiraling down and you're gonna punch right into the middle point, like right there in front of you and bring it down. Punch, down, punch, down, punch, down. Punch, let your shoulder leave the floor. Return your shoulder to the floor and then spiral down. Punch, shoulder leaves the floor, return to the floor, spiral down. Punch, shoulder leaves, it returns, spiral down. Shoulder leaves, it returns, spiral down. Now don't leave with your shoulder. Just push, push, punch, punch, punch. We're gonna add a leg. So you're gonna kick, kick, cross body, kick, kick, opposite arm to leg, punch, this is our opposite arm to like, I don't know, this is just like a little coordination exercise, getting that contralateral movement in our body and some activity in the tissue of your forearm. So it, it actually feels pretty easy to me to do that. So not every exercise has to be really difficult, like whatever, how old was I, 24, 25, something like that when I went through the Laban Institute. And I was like, if you, it was, I had the old thinking of if it's not super intense and intensely physical, nothing is happening. It's so opposite of that. We need to think, oh, these really gentle exercises where we're building coordination, where we're moving our fascia, they're great. They're super important as well as the super intense ones. So we're going to flip it over, get a little bit more intense. Let me just relocate my mat. There we go. So we're going to come to a Curled toes under. We already did a bunch of standing cat cow. And you're going to just hover your knees off the floor and then arch and curl. Inhale, open, exhale, curl. If you need to, go ahead and drop your knees down to the floor. But if not, try to stay up there. Head and tail up, head and tail down. Head and tail up, head and tail down. Arching and curling and arching and curling and release. Knees down, open the hands wider than your sticky mat, circling down to the floor and up. Rib cage, lungs, heart, diaphragm, ah, moving, feeling into the movement. Circling, finding flow, releasing stuckness, change direction, other way. Sometimes the stuckness is in our thinking and sometimes it's in our patterning in our body, how we're patterning our body. So a friend of mine who's a, um, a physical therapist and an Alec, oh no, Feldenkrais person, Feldenkrais person and physical therapist, really great body worker, Karen Donaldson. She works in the city and in New Jersey. We were talking about the fascia and everything. She goes, oh, that's where the pattern is held. So it's also, it's the, the holding patterns of who we are form and are held in the fascia, right? So we, oh, I think I'm this kind of person. I walk around like this. And so my fascia is gonna help me support that way. Or oh, I'm kind of like, not so certain, I'm kind of shrinking. Fascia is gonna help support that, right? And then when we start to move, we can shift those patterns around, feel what it feels like to be different. Who we are is not a locked set thing. There's a lot of freedom to that. If you're not happy with it, shift it, change it, find ways, ecology of practices. Okay, we're gonna go opposite arm to leg out, take it to the diagonal, bring it back in line and lower down. Come to some extension in your back here. You can release the extension as you open up, but then pick it back up and bring it down. So there's a little arch, maybe a flat back, bring it to the arch and come down. Arch, flat back, arch and come down. Arch or keep it in the arch. That's a lot more work. 
might not be a whole lot different, but there is something going on. So listen to your own body. One more time each side. Come down, elbows to the floor, arch and curl. Spine pushing with your arms, letting your chest drop through, stick out your butt. And then we're gonna come to a forearm plank. One knee to the floor at a time going parallel parallel, twist, twist, outer shoulder, outer shoulder, come up, come down, parallel, parallel, twist, twist, outer shoulder, outer shoulder, try to come up with the other side leading the way, if you remember what that is, come down, parallel, parallel, twist, twist, shoulder, shoulder, up, down, parallel, parallel, twist, twist, Shoulder, shoulder, up, down, last one, parallel, parallel, twist, twist, shoulder, shoulder, up, down. Take it all the way down to the floor. Oh, relax, that was a little bit of exercise. Bend your knees, let your legs fall from side to side. Breathing, find your breath. And then come in, opposite arm to leg, inhale up, exhale down. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, inhale. So Lori Nimitz is one of the people who's like going to the, and presenting at the like International Fascia Congress, you know, year, pretty regularly, let's say that. She's done a bunch of dissections and she was even on the like, God, what was it? Something plastination project. Anyway, so according to this book, what we agree on is that all fascia is connective tissue, but not all connective tissue is fascia. So this can change. Right now in the thinking, bone is not considered fascia. Blood is not considered fascia, but both blood and bone are connective tissues. Blood is fibrous, right? It has the capacity to coagulate, right? It can create a scab or inside our body, a clot, right? So that's like, and then also the whole system of our blood is actually connecting our whole body. So just some thinking on that, just to throw that out there. Bandy some information for you. Let's do a deep pumping breath with swimming. So huff and puff all the way down deep into your diaphragm. So it's pushing down to your organs and then everything blows out. Off we go. Lift the whole thing up, float it around. Take your hands next to your chest, arch all the way up, look toward the ceiling, and then release it back down. <laughs> Going up. When you get to the top, try engaging your glutes and then release your glutes and just feel what's different about that. A lot of times people are like, okay, squeeze your glutes. I don't think we always need to do that. Sometimes yes, but not always. So I don't know, whenever people tell you to work your muscles more than you would naturally work them, I'm always a little suspect. And yet sometimes it does make total sense. So listen in, feel in your own body, see if it makes sense and adjust accordingly, right? You, it's agency, you are the one, you are the main ingredient. You will be in your body your whole life. Nobody else is in there your whole life. And you may change a lot, but still the consciousness that comes into this world in you is gonna be there the whole time. We could say the awake awareness inside you is gonna be there the whole time. Can you notice that it's there? Take a child's pose. I'm gonna rock up and rock down because I still don't wanna stay 
you know, deep flexion in that knee, but you could also just stay in child's pose, breathing into it. Then we're gonna do one more thing here. And this is something that really actually helped me with my knee recovery. <laughs> and that is it's like, you're gonna sit on your heels and then you come back up. You can adjust it so you're not doing that much weight by really reaching forward, or you can make it harder by taking your body back, right? If we were practicing yogis, we've been doing this for a long time, we might be able to go all the way down to the floor and come back up. That's not me right now. So for me right now, what I'm finding the most beneficial is to do this down and then pressing up and trying to stay really even that my weight is evenly centered in my body. So both legs are doing the same amount of work. When I first did this, when I was first rehabbing my knee, I was like so completely overusing the other side that that leg was like super sore. I was like, oh my God. So I did it, but I just really did it on one side. So try to stay even both sides. If you need to make it easier, don't go that far and reach your arms forward. If you wanna make it harder, go far, bring it back up, right? We're working the quad as we're stretching. So whenever we work a muscle on the stretch, more change is available. Let's put it that way. Good, and come down, curl your toes under, take your butt to the ceiling, downward dog. Bend one knee, bend the other. Let's just do a couple of rolling planks. Lifting your heels, scoop your belly in, round your spine, roll it forward. I'm gonna lower down, bring myself back up, drop my head. You can skip the push up if you want. Heels high, scoop the belly in, roll it forward. Knees down if you wanna make it easier. Optional push up. I'm on a tear to build strength in my upper body. So it's working. The way to do it is to do it, but make it work. So I'm gonna put my knees down and do a couple more. Make it work for you. No need to injure yourself. And last one, by a couple, it never really means a couple, but that is the last one. Walk it in, stand on your legs, interlace your hands behind your back, bend and straighten your knees, breathe. So there's one more thing that I'm gonna talk about that I also feel like really helps my knees. Uh, and this, so these things, these knee helper things I learned on YouTube. Thank you, different people who taught this to me. I wish I could credit you, but I can't remember who you were. So yeah, physio people on YouTube, intense athlete weirdos who are like, I have to rehab my knee. I'm like, I'm checking them out and I'm seeing how it feels in my body. And these things have really helped. So here's another one. We're just gonna do a couple more things and then we'll be done. You're gonna go against the wall and just pick up your feet. So my weight is, I'm, my heels are maybe just over a foot away from the wall, up and down, working that tibialis anterior. So that picking up the front of the shin engaging. I think this is, there's plantar flexion and dorsiflexion. I always forget which one's which. Plantar is the bottom of your foot. Dorsey is the top. Okay, now we're gonna take it a little bit deeper into a wall sit. Walk your feet out if you need to, and the same thing. I'm not going, am I gonna go down to 90? Let's do it one at a time. So here, one and then the other. Then you have a little bit more support. One and then the other. Feel your back expansive on the wall. Breathe into it. Good, and then release push away. So the thing that I want to say, like when I'm hiking or walking and my knee starts to hurt, if I just try and dorsiflex or plantar flex, whichever one it is, really kick out my leg and pick up my foot, it makes my knee do have to do less work. So I'm not just this with my feet, not really doing any work, but I am actively reaching with my heel, landing with my heel so that the whole leg is working more 
it usually really helps me when I'm hiking to, for whatever's going on to relieve it. So just think about that. Even if you're going up a hill, like flex the foot and also, yeah, flex the foot, let it swing forward. And then you can drag yourself along. Like there's two ways of walking and then a million combinations in between. One of them is drag and pull, drag and pull, drag and pull, kind of relaxing your lower body. Another one is push off the toes, push off the toes, push off the toes. The swing, drag, pull, push off the toes somewhere in the middle, but it could be pull, 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 or push, push, push. So just paying attention to your gait, what you doing? What are your go-tos with that? All right, I think we've gone for a long time. Oh yeah, we've gone over. So we're just gonna breathe and end it. Inhale, open, stretch it out and up. Exhale, shake it out, shake it out, shake it out. <laughs> Inhale, open. Heart, lungs, chest, fingertips, feet on the floor, feeling into this. Gratitude for the air that we're breathing. We're all breathing the air. The air that I breathe may be going into your lungs, <laughs> right? Inhale, open, exhale. The water that we're drinking. We're all connected to the planet. Gratitude for the water. Gratitude for the earth that we aren't falling off of, the gravitational pull holding us onto the earth. And then gravity, uh, gratitude for like the fire of our spirits, for our drive, for our brightness. Yay, all the things. And if you are out there in TV land, please feel to, free to like and subscribe. Hello, hello. I see that we actually have people there. Um, yeah, and if you have questions, feel free to ask me in either the chat or in the description below, the words, the comment section. So nice to see everybody. I am going to end the live stream if I don't see anything coming into the chat.